Bengal Gazette in 1870. Do you know, he even printed articles mercilessly criticizing the activities of Lady Hastings, just like all your little magazines nowadays, which denounce the establishment constantly. These protests, this venting of anger, this mocking of the authorities, all of this must be boiling in your belly all the time. No wonder the people of Kolkata have such bad labors. There's nothing wrong with our liverists or with our cantilevers. Howrah Bridge is a cantilever bridge, isn't it? It's been there since 1943, in perfect condition. <laughs> I have to agree there. Thousands of cars, buses, trucks have been driving across it every single day, but not a dent anywhere. And I can never get over the fact that this is a bridge without a single screw. <laughs> that explains why those who have a screw loose often climb to the top of the Aura Bridge. But my God, can you imagine the view? Oh please, are you seriously asking me? Haven't I been balancing here on top of Victoria Memorial for almost a hundred years now? <laughs> Have you any idea the things I can see? Couples in love, people up to no good, experimental art in the Academy of Fine Arts, all the money being blown up at the race course. <laughs> And over on the other side, those babus in suits impersonating Englishmen. You want to teach me views and news? I know you inside out, Kolkata Babu. Uh, not only do you know me, I'm certain you've been infected by me too. I mean, look at you. Sometimes you spin madly up there and it gets dusty. Other times you're an old lady who can't root at this spot. Why, even this building is so far off. This announced this was the way I'll be able to touch my And wait, wasn't it planned out of cow dung so that the Japanese couldn't bomb it? <laughs> cow dung. When thousands of people were dying of starvation on your streets during that same Second World War, people would step over them daintily to go to work and to meet their friends. At home, they would put on the gramophone to drown the loud cries begging for scraps. Well, I admit it. Many things that ought to have been done were not done. But I will have you know, it's also true that free kitchens were opened in every neighborhood of Calcutta. Besides, the famine was a creation of the government, of politicians and bureaucrats. Winston Churchill cannot evade responsibility for the death of so many people. Do you know what he said about them? The starvation of anyhow underfed Bengalis is less serious than that of sturdy Greeks. How could he? Don't forget either that no one, Bijan Bhattacharya's brilliant play about the famine, was staged in this very city. Well, yes, I give you that. Leftist artists created the Indian People's Theatre Association, or ICTA as everyone called it, just a year earlier in 1942. I cannot even begin to count the number of jewels it produced in Kolkata. No one no was just one of them. So many other memorable songs, plays, films, Utwal Dottu and Jyotirindranath Moitro, Devobrata Vishash and Shuril Jodhri. All of them were dazzling diamonds from the Ipta mines, while Mrinal Shem was its spiritual disciple. So inspiring, using art as a weapon to transform society, to galvanize thousands of people with 
excellence and passion. It was like the chariot leading a magical revolution, traveling tirelessly. The Queen of 76, known as Chia Torre Monnonto, which took place about 170 years before the one of 1943, was man-made too. That one was also created by the British, who were cruelly squeezing people for taxes and sowing opium and indigo in rice fields. Then too, millions of helpless people perished right here in my arms. What could I have done? I only watched in silence. If only there had been an IPT then. You are a strange one, sir. Sometimes you were wide awake, and then at other times you seemed fast asleep. Which of these two states were you in when the 19th century baboos were squandering their riches on the weddings of their pet cats? when they were bathing in rose water. Were you half asleep? Were you dozing? So much fun! Here are these people oiling themselves profusely and then riding off in a four-horse carriage to bathe in the river. What reckless glamour! And look, if the Babus didn't go overboard, where would the Kondoshus of the Baiji's dance have been, huh? Or for that matter, the schools and colleges they started? Even my most beautifully illuminated festival. The Durga Puja would not have come into me. Hmm? Durga Puja would not have happened? Why not, sir? Obviously, you don't know that it was Babu Nobu Krishna Dev of Shubhavaja who donated large sums of money to set up madrasas, <laughs> to build roads, to have musicians gotten from all over the country for elaborate concerts. He not only participated in the conspiracy against Siraj Dola in the Battle of Plassey, but also organized a magnificent Durga Puja to commemorate the victory. This was the event which put the Durga Puja so prominently on our calendars. Are you telling me that the man who started the idea of the big fat Durga Puja was the one who wanted to hand Bengal over to the British? Of course. Bengal would not have fallen into British hands had Sirajudola not attacked me with a huge army in 1756. If he had not bonded the East India Company's forces into submission, the British wouldn't have dared declare war on a Nawab. I feel they would still have declared war. Just that the proper nouns would have been different. They're not a race to give up without taking control. The wheels began to turn as soon as the company's agent, Job Chanak, moored his boat here on August 24, 1690, amidst torrential rain. And your history began to take shape. <laughs> what you said is wrong on not one but two counts. Firstly, Kobi Konkun Mukundaram had written about me long before Chana came into the picture. In fact, I was present even earlier in Bipradash Mipilai's Monosha Mongol verses of 1495. Shabur Nurai Jodhuri's family were the zamindars of Calcutta well before the advent of the British. So, my history does not begin there. Secondly, can you say things necessarily to get turned for the worse with Charlotte's arrival? No, you cannot. Ram Mohan Roy put an end to the practice of Sati, but would he have succeeded without the assistance of Lord Benting? Would Michael Modushudan Dotto have changed the direction of Bengali poetry had he not read Milton? Would Bonkim Chandra Chattopadhyay have written the first novel in Bangla 
If he had not been familiar with Walter Scott, would Isha Chandra Vidyashagor have been able to introduce widow remarriage without the support of the British? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? May I remind you of some scenes from your own history? How can you forget the thousands of people lined your streets to shower martyr Khudiram Boshu's dead body with flowers? Or that Binoy, Badol and Dinesh killed themselves after assassinating a tyrannical British officer in writer's building? Why, one of your most renowned barristers, Chitranjun Dash, used to have his clothes laundered in Paris, but the same person burnt all his western wear and began to dress in khadi. The man he defended successfully in the Alipur bomb case was none other than the poet of patriotism, Aurobindo Ghosh. For heaven's sake, sir, you are the city where the revolutionary organization Urushilon Shomiti was born. But of course, after all, the monument was erected in 1828 in memory of Commander David Octoloni to commemorate the East India Company's victory in two battles, wasn't it? But just imagine, its name was actually changed to Shaheed Minar in 1969 when it was dedicated to the martyrs in India's war of freedom. <laughs> you don't have to be so angry though. I was only wondering. You know, this is armchair pundit. What if this? What if that? What if lions and tigers had prowled the streets of Kolkata? <laughs> That's not exactly speculation. The Bengal tiger is famous. And he did, in fact, live in Calcutta. He took charge of Calcutta University in 1907, 50 years after it was established in 1857. And he transformed it completely. He is none other than Sir Ashutosh Mukhopadhyay. And what of the lion? The lion? Ah, we also call him the Shing Ho, don't we? So, what about Kali Prashunna Sinha or Kali Prashunna Shing Ho? who not only translated the Mahabharat, but also wrote Uthumpa Charnoksha about me. Right. And rhinos? What about them? Oh, the rhinos. They are the ones whose skins could not be penetrated by the teachings of Kolkata's great men. They abused Ram Mohan Roy. And as for Vindyashagur, they made up satirical songs about him and sang them every day, which he tolerated. As it happens. Personally, I think these are the precise things that demonstrate how far ahead of the times these great men were. Vivekananda had to hear that he was no sage, for he visited the land of Christians and ate meat. And yet, it was he who made India proud with his speech in Chicago, right? His Guru Ram Krishna was even told he was illiterate. But he attracted the best minds with his natural wisdom and deep knowledge of religion. It was he who said, Joto moth, Toto poth. There are as many methods as there are viewpoints. He was referring not just to different faiths, but also to the philosophy of Kolkata's flowing life. We don't care for criticism. Even Dramindranath Tagore had to take it. Apparently, all his writings are convoluted, and he founded Shantini Ketan with unclear intentions, etc., etc. But his Nobel Prize is still the first line of my poetry of pride. I may have been displaced from the status of India's capital city in 1911, but just two years later came a crown whose luster is never to be diminished. The Nobel Committee said, Rovindranath Tagore is being awarded the prize 
because of his profoundly sensitive, fresh, and beautiful verse. He was the first Indian to get the Nobel. Oh, can you imagine? Six Nobel laureates from one city and in five different fields at that. In 1902, Ronald Ross won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. 1930, the Nobel for Physics went to C.V. Raman, who conducted his research in Kolkata for the Raman effect. In 1979, Mother Teresa got the Nobel Peace Prize. And in 1998, Amartya Sen for Economics. And in 2019, Abhijit Banerjee was awarded the Nobel for work done in the area of alleviating global poverty. Not that getting Nobel was the last word. Scientist Jagadish Chandra Bosch may not have won it, but he shines bright in my sky. His genius stretched from the discovery of life and plants to the invention of the radio. Then there was Prabhullo Chandra Rai, the first non-European to be honored with the Chemical Landmark Award by the Royal Chemical Society of England. There was Shottendranath Boshu, standard bearer of Bose-Einstein statistics, after whom the Boson particle is named. There was Prashanta Chandra Mohoranovich, father of the practice of statistics in India, architect of the planning commission, whose birthday is now observed as the National Statistics Day. I hate to puncture your balloon, but this hallowed center of science is also a hotbed of unscientific fads, dear sir. In 1857, Kolkata saw the craze of the return of the dead. Some said all the people who have died this year will be back on the night of Kali Pujo. Others claimed, no, all those who have died in the past 10 years will be back on the 15th day of the month of Kartik. There was a commotion all over the city. Many people began to wait for their dead relatives. Songs were composed too. The dead people are back. I saw them floating in Ranaghat. Scrawny neck and swollen belly, wobbling like a lump of jelly. <laughs> Guilty as charged. The 1979 rumors were no less sensational. The American satellite Skylab was going to collapse any day. People kept staring at the sky. Many of them actually walked around in helmets all day. Well, some pieces of Skylab did fall. But that was in Australia, in and around Perth, and some other places. Nowhere near Calgary. Oh, oh, yeah, but the madness I remember best was when Ganesh began to drink one afternoon in 1995. <laughs> Temple Ganeshas, calendar Ganeshas, hole in the wall Ganeshas, no one was left out. Apparently, they were all drinking milk as though their lives depended on it. Everyone ran headlong to their nearest Ganesha's with milk. <laughs> Being left out of this miracle would have meant falling short on their quota of good deeds. Ah, that's what we call Derosio's phantom punch. Do you know him? Before your time, a 17-year-old annual Indian, a mere boy, a teacher of English at Hindu College, who told the students, argue, validate, use your reason, challenge tradition, and his students, well, it's better to call them disciples, fanned out far and wide as young Bengal, trying to reform society. This too happened in Calcutta. Please, I am perfectly aware of the story.